we will encounter different sinners in the Gospels that Christ befriended, right? Um, and so this month, again, we're given examples of repentance and different kinds of people from different kinds of backgrounds. And so St. John, he's truly an amazing prophet. And the Lord Christ actually calls him the greatest born among women. In verse 28 of the Gospel from uh, Luke chapter 7, he says, For I say to you, among those born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Imagine, imagine just how important St. John is and that he must be that our Lord would speak so highly of him. A prophet has the role of correcting people. He has the role of bringing people back to God. So St. John does this exactly while reminding the people to prepare the way for the Lord and to make his path straight. So, okay, where should we make this path? Where should we prepare this path? Is it somewhere in Jerusalem? Is it somewhere in the wilderness? Perhaps it's somewhere in locally, in Chino Hills. No. St. John is asking people to prepare themselves. The, it's the heart and the mind that's needed to be prepared. It is the activities of our lives that need to be made straight. And they feed into each other. We, we don't repent just out of thin air. We repent of actual deeds. We repent of actual thoughts and words and ideas, the things that we hold within us. We repent of things that we've actually done wrong. But when we start with this honest repentance, when we are truly challenging ourselves, we find that God pours out his mercy on us, and he does this in a way that we don't expect. That he comes to us. He visits us. We are preparing a way and making a straight path so that he can come visit us and dwell within us. The Lord wants to reside in each one of our hearts. And so St. John tells us that this can't be done unless we first clear a path. We have to make a path for him to walk. We have to make a path for him to even find us. And he reminds us that getting to God, or more specifically, allowing God to get to us, is actually very straightforward. It's not that complicated. We're reminded that the decision to enter the church and to follow Christ with, with our whole hearts first begins to leave our old ways behind. The decision to put on Christ in baptism begins when we have the decision to die with the old man and to first put on, uh, this happens through repentance. So this is exactly what St. John was preaching to all the people who eagerly waited the appearance of the long-awaited Messiah. He taught the people to repent. Even our Lord himself, when he first opened his mouth to preach, he taught the people to repent. Now, I'm not saying this in order to remind you the things that you already know. I'm saying this in order to encourage all of us to start embracing a true life of repentance. So how do we embrace this life? We start by, by praying in secret. We ask God to forgive our many sins and our many shortcomings. And look, this shouldn't be done every once in a blue moon. This has to be done each and every day, if we're honest about it. And then we go to others, and we ask them to forgive us. We do this whether we've done something, or whether they perceive we have done something against them. Either way, we're trying to clear the ground of our hearts, and to prepare a place for the word of God and his grace to rest. We try to be at peace with everyone around us. That we have control over. We can't control what is going on with other people around us, but we can control ourselves. And then we can come to the sacrament of confession. And then Christ will grant us the forgiveness of sins through the hands of the priest. And then we continue to embrace the Christian life. We study the word of God. 
especially the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospels. And when we know the teachings of Christ, then we have a rule to live by. We can repent properly because now we can compare our lives to his teachings and to his life. And then we can go deeper. We can go further in our spiritual life. We can spend time reading the lives of the saints and their writings. We should be doing this a little bit each day. It's a good practice to look up the Synexar, the lives of the saints, every single day. The lives of the saints are like multivitamins, right? I've heard this one said, it's not mine. But I've heard it said it was this way, that the saints are, the lives of the saints are like multivitamins. You don't take a vitamin only once a month or once a year if you have a deficiency. No, you have to take them on a regular basis to cure that deficiency. And one of the deficiencies that we have in this modern world is that we live in a fallen world. And one of the ways that we are healed and brought to a proper relationship with God and our neighbors is through reading and knowing the ways that the saints lived and acted in their context so that we can apply it to our lives. So we can study them. We must study them. And we have to follow in their footsteps. And if you're saying to yourself, like, Abuna, I don't really want to be a saint. I'm kind of happy with the way I am. I don't really want to be a saint. That kind of sounds boring. Then, unfortunately, we're misguided. We don't really understand. Like, to become a saint is to become exactly who God meant you to be from the beginning. To have unending communion with Christ, our Master, and His saints. So, prepare the way of the Lord, and to make His path straight. If this is not a worthwhile New Year's resolution, I'm not sure what is. Prepare the way of the Lord, make His path straight. But what does that actually mean for us? What does this path, what is this path, and why do we have to make it straight? What is the way of the Lord, and how do we prepare it? We have to, we have to know that these words refer to the heart. Christ, again, desires to live and to rule his people in their hearts. And we who deeply desire to know him more intimately, more deeply, are given a way forward from here. We have to prepare the way of the heart and to straighten the paths of the heart so that God can come to us, or rather, that we might come to him. We prepare the way of the Lord in the same way that the people prepared the way of the Lord so long ago when, when these words were first spoken. We repent. We confess. We receive baptism. We receive the washing away of our sins. Of course, we know that in our Orthodox faith, there can only be one baptism. So how can we be baptized again? St. Basil says that there is a second baptism. The baptism of tears. The baptism of tears. We should pray in a heartfelt manner and reflect on our sin. We should acknowledge that our sins have truly separated us from God. Who loves us? And sin, frankly, separates us from our families and our friends. So we should acknowledge that our sin has tainted every single thing that we have done in our lives. And I have to understand that my sins affect more than just me. They are felt within the whole community. And our sins are, are powerful, but God is more powerful. So why should we start our New Year's with this kind of resolution? Because as Christians, we have stated that we desire to know God. And we desire to be his sons and his daughters. And this is the only way to make our desire a reality. Through true, heartfelt, even uncomfortable and painful repentance. Anytime someone who wants to build a house, we think 
that the first thing they have to do is prepare the foundation. But it's not true, not necessarily. The first thing that we have to do is to clear a path for the materials and the workers and the equipment to come to the construction site. Our Lord will provide all the material. He provides the workers. He provides the equipment. And he will oversee the job. The materials are the sacraments. And this brings us the grace of God, especially through communion. The workers of the clergy and our fellow brothers and sisters who serve, who serve the needs out of love. The equipment is the church and all that's contained in her. Her prayers, her discipline, her services, her hymns. And all that is provided by the chief builder, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. What's required from us is to clear the path for him to work. We have to give him space to work. And the work requires patience and time. And it requires us to genuinely struggle to keep the path clear and straight for the Lord. If the Lord is always battling for a spot on the path, we are bound for failure. But if we uproot the sins and the unnatural lusts of our heart, then we can do, he can do a marvelous work in our lives. I know all of us want to be a saint, but it's only possible if the heart is struggling for purity. So how do we struggle in a practical sense? Our struggle is not just to avoid certain things and certain activities. This is a good start. This reminds me of Psalm 1, to avoid certain things. Yes, this is good. This is a good start. But we have to struggle to actually do some things that are very important. I think sometimes we focus too much on avoiding sin without necessarily filling the void with something good. So we have to develop a spiritual rule in our lives. And this is given to us by our fathers in confession. It has to be something that we do every single day without fail. If you don't think this is possible spiritually, just remember that you do shower every single day, hopefully. You brush your teeth every day, hopefully. And you perhaps eat every single day, hopefully. We develop rules for our lives and for other reasons, we, we find them as a source of life, and we need to do these things. There's, there's no way around it. But when it comes to our souls, our souls are hungry, and they need to be fed. And it needs to be fed by God. So we have to dedicate time to God each and every single day. Don't try to convince yourself or to your priest that you don't have time. Our days are numbered by God. This is what we were reflecting on for the past two Sundays about the end times. There are plenty of prayer books. There's plenty of apps that can be used. For, and we have recommendations and things like that. Ideally, it would be nice if we prayed each day in the morning, each day at night. We live a life of repentance. We daily confess our sins to God. But we should understand that purity is holistic. And it builds on our environment and our senses. Look, Christians have no business watching filth. No matter what the name that filth goes by. We have to guard our doors of our hearts with diligence, with zeal, because our God is a jealous God, and he refuses to share a space in our hearts. There is only room to love God and to love your neighbors. Sometimes, even if what we are watching or listening to is not awful, but it can still obscure the path to our hearts. We have to be very careful. Social media is not just a drain on our time, but 
it can go deeper if we're not careful. So if you want to continue to use it, do so. But understand that when it replaces things that are spiritually productive, it becomes a problem because your life was given to you so that you would have fellowship with God and to serve him. So to conclude, here we are at the start of another year, a Coptic year. And we are doing the most important thing that we could do together. We are seeking communion with our Lord Jesus Christ, and we are in unity together. So let us remember the first things, the essential aspects of our walk with Christ. If Christ and his commandments are our focus and our concern at the start of the year and at the start of each and every day and each moment of our lives, then we will truly be blessed. And that's ultimately what the gospel reading is telling us today, to focus on the lives of the saints, to focus on someone like St. John, to cleanse our hearts in an uncompromising way and allow space for God. Allow space for what is holy. And then you will be surprised by the way that God breathes new life in you, in your life, in your relationships, in your school, and in your work. May the Lord bless the crown of the new year by his grace and his love towards all of us. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Behold the Spirit of the Lord.